Okay, so this is what I do. This is my routine. I literally will sit outside wherever I am, get my coffee ready, my ice ready, because I got to have those two things. Now, this video, it ended up being not a fail, but a little difficult. I kept recording clips because I wanted to do a different clip or a different background for each of the five tips. And yeah, that didn't work out too well. This one was okay, but when I got to the second and third clips and tips, it, it just wasn't, I wasn't focused and I was really tired, which makes the tips that much more important. So yeah, um, <laughs> this one was a little, a little difficult, but I pulled it off and you will see some interruptions towards the end. Don't mind those, you know, just a part of life living in the ghetto, nothing serious. But y'all know me, I always bring the good content and the lessons and the, the craziness. So enjoy me chomping on this ice. Y'all, I have iron deficiency, so I eat ice all day. Here come the coffee. Wait for it. Wait for it. There she is. <laughs> I gotta stop. Coffee and ice are going to take every bit of my money. Like, this is ridiculous. But anywho, enjoy, and I hope these tips help you. Okay, now that we got that out the way, I don't know why it be telling me two minutes and something out of eight. I don't know what none of that means. Um, hold on, because if my food fall, oh, and got me a new book. <laughs> I'm excited. Cause I got a tax, I'm such a nerd. Like who gets excited that they have tax books? Like who does that? Are you gonna let me go? Okay. That's gonna be a long one. Okay. So I'm doing multiple, multiple shots or multiple scenes, I should say on five tips <clears throat> that I have for entrepreneurs. Become an entrepreneur, I'm already an entrepreneur, and it's people that are more experienced than me. It's entrepreneurs out there that are more experienced than me. So, you know, I used to have this whole idea of, well, who am I to tell somebody something like, what makes me so special and blah, blah, blah. I'm different, I'm built different. Okay, so somebody could, Dave, for instance, entrepreneur way longer than me uh it's a whole bunch of people that's been entrepreneurs way longer than me i learned from them so but at the same time i'm a different entrepreneur than they are so that's another thing don't compare yourself to nobody whatever your skill is is your skill nobody can take that away from you it doesn't matter if they do the same thing as you it's gonna get real bumpy on hold because they don't know how to fix no streets up here yet they got the fire you shut down <clears throat> but for each tip, it's going to be a different clip. <laughs> Bars. Um, but so for tip number one, while I'm riding in the car. So yes, y'all going to see about five different outfits. Yeah, you might see me in this one. Okay, I might, you know, it, it, it depends. I'm, I'm just being a different place. I ain't got to explain nothing, y'all. Anyway, uh, that was bumpy. That was real bad. That, that was real bad. Tip number one. Have faith. Tip number one is have faith. Period. That's the first tip. That it, it, I can't. I, I'm gonna say rest, and I'm gonna say a whole bunch of other stuff. But uh, Christian, what you tagging me in? A comment on? Sorry, it was a uh, notification. I'm gonna tell you a bunch of other stuff, but none of that matters unless you have faith. So you have to have faith first that's tip number one period it, it, it ain't no it ain't no way around it if you don't have faith even the size of a mustard seed if you don't have faith or along with that have some type of spiritual strength you ain't gonna make it you ain't gonna make it and i'm talking to you and me 
every time I talk, I talk to you and me. I'm a motivator. I'm a motivator, but I mo motivate myself as I'm motivating others. Um, because it's hard. It's, it's scary. Um, it's so many unpredictable moments. Like, there have been times, like just recently, okay, I left one job to go become a full-time entrepreneur. I have debt. I have a lot of debt. And in my mind, on one side, it's like, girl, what the fuck you doing? Sir, can you not come out in the on the bike? I don't want you to die today. I mean, we all gotta go sometimes, but I don't I don't wanna be the cause. But you can't just come out on your bike like that. I have a lot of debt, so it's like, sis, why are you doing this and you have a lot of debt? I had to come to the understanding that it it I'm on you gonna always have bills. I'd rather be happy in debt doing my own thing. And it's gonna sound this ain't gonna make a lot of sense to a lot of people, but it makes sense to me. I'd rather be happy in, in my debt but doing what I wanna be doing. Then working two and three jobs of something that I don't want to do so that I can have money, or I guess you can say, which is kind of tricky because you want to you want to have financial freedom. Let me not take that away from y'all. You want to have financial freedom. You don't want to be in debt, but there are ways you can be an entrepreneur and get out of debt. You're still working. It's not like you're not working. I, if I didn't have not one client, lined up if i not if, if i wasn't an entrepreneur for five years then i would not have done this but because i've been doing it for so long that it's like now i'm at a position where i can do it but in order for me to have done that i had to have faith first i gotta have faith first that's the only way you're gonna be able to get through the hard times and it's hard because entrepreneur money it's not always guaranteed money. You got a tight budget. It's stuff you want, you can't pay for. It's stuff that's gonna better your business, you can't pay for. It's and you gotta take care of not only the business, but you gotta take care of yourself. You gotta pay your own personal bills. It's a it's a lot that comes with being an entrepreneur and working for yourself. So you gotta have faith. If you don't have faith and you're not strong in your spiritual life, you will fail. That's gonna sound harsh to a lot of people, but I don't care. <laughs> not when it comes to that. I don't care. If you do not have faith, you will fail. Because you have to believe that whatever it is you want in life, whatever it is that you're, go you're doing, your, your, whatever your business is, you have to have faith that it's going to take care of it and you. Because if you ain't got faith in it, don't do it. You got to faith it till you make it. That's 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 the line. You gotta fake it till you make it, because if, without no faith, you ain't you ain't gonna get nowhere far in life. Period. But especially being an entrepreneur, so please make sure before you make any decisions, talk to God first. I went back and forth on whether I was going to, because. I can't remember if I mentioned in the last one, but the school wanted me to go full-time. I couldn't remember if I told the reason, because at the time I was still working there, but I ain't working on no more. But the school wanted me to go full-time, and I couldn't. I couldn't do it. I couldn't imagine working from 6, at the six in the morning. 6 in the morning? What? From 6 in the morning to 3 o'clock in the afternoon, full-time hours. And working at that school back at 3 don't mean nothing. You're going to be working till about 5 o'clock taking care of the school it was stressing me out just being part-time and then taking care of ttm taking care of my accounting clients taking care of my publishing clients taking care of my my babies i tutor i do so much i can't even get my fourth book out because i'm doing too much and i don't like it it was so i went back and forth and the crazy part is i wanted to be full-time in the beginning because even being part-time six years that debt that debt is what got me because I'm like in order for me to pay this shit down I'm going to have to work uh, uh, more hours or you know more. I'm going to have to have more income they weren't even trying to give a G with what I was worth they tried to hit me with the with the 35, 36k I said y'all kiss all my ass I ain't, 
I be good and goddamn if I got two degrees and I make thirty six thousand a year. I can make thirty six thousand a year by my goddamn self. I, uh uh no no. So you want to drive me crazy and run me ragged for thirty six thousand dollars? Shit, got me messed up. So I but I went back and forth with it. And it's like every time I try to go full time somewhere, it just don't work out. And it got like, it's like on one hand, once I started thinking about my financial responsibilities, I got scared. And I was like, it's no way I'm going to be able to pay for all this debt and the stuff, my bills. Like, I, it's no way. And I still have those thoughts sometimes that it's like, am I really going to be able to do this? Like, rent due. What if, what if one of my clients leave? What if I don't get another client? What if, what, it's always what if, what if, what if, what if. I had to stop, stop that. You just gotta have faith. You just, you just gotta have faith. I just, you know what? I ain't even worried about it. God gonna take care of. He gonna take care of it because that ain't my business. That ain't my business. That's his business. That ain't my business. You gotta have faith when you are an entrepreneur because if you do not have faith, they got a damn they call. If you do not have faith, you ain't got nothing. You ain't going to be able to handle nothing. You ain't going to be able to do nothing. It's like you have to tell yourself, my business is going to thrive. I'm going to thrive. You have to keep telling yourself that. God is with me. God is walking with me. He's going to bless me in this path and in this purpose. You have to talk to yourself. I do it all day. Because you have to have faith, period. That's that's tip number one. That's number one above all. I hate talking when people come in. I don't like that. Mm -mm. It be looking weird. But <laughs> it be making me feel weird. What, what you stopping for, bro? I don't know. He got a cigarette. He got a mean look on him. He trying to get out of the game. I'm sorry. I live in the hood. I be having to be on watch. Oh, I can't wait to move from here. Again, I want to move. Um, But that's 625 rent, though. Sound real good to an entrepreneur. Um, but you got to have faith. Without faith, even the size of a mustard seed, you ain't going to be able to do nothing. You ain't going to be able to do nothing. So I had to learn to have full faith. I had half faith. I had half faith. The full faith came when I made the decision to be a full-time entrepreneur because I had either you gonna go full-time at this school and be an entrepreneur when you can barely do it part-time, or it, and once you go full-time, something gonna have to fall. You gonna lose TTM. You gonna lose because you're not a robot. So something gonna have to go. YouTube channel. Something gonna have to go. Or you could step out on faith and take a leap of faith. And just become a full-time entrepreneur. And you can do it that way. That was a tough decision I had to make. I went with faith. I went with faith. Because I knew that was the only... I knew the day was going to come where I had to make that decision. And I knew that was the only way I was going to be happy. Because I'd rather be happy and broke than miserable with money. I'm telling y'all. Y'all think I'm playing. It's mental health over money for me. At least if I'm pissed off at my manager... Or my supervisor, I'm pissed off at myself. I'm the authority. I'm the CEO. So if I'm slipping, I can be mad at myself. I can cuss myself out. Like, bitch, what is you doing? I have to do that sometimes. Hey, 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 get, what are you doing? What are you doing? Get, get it together. I have to do that. And it's okay for me to have to do that. So... Faith is a big part of it. That's number one. That's number one. That's clip number one. That's tip number one. Have faith. Without faith, you're not going to make it. Nothing else comes before that. Nothing else comes before faith in God and faith in yourself. You have to have faith in yourself that you're going to be able to do it. If you don't have faith in yourself that you can pull it off, you ain't going to pull it off. You have to <clears throat> You have to believe. I know you fucking with he ain't got tattoos everywhere. Okay. I'm sorry, y'all. My my rapists work across the street, and I swear sometimes I be having to make sure it ain't him. So, yeah. 
sorry about that. But uh, you have to have, you gotta fake it. That's that's tip number one. It's it's gonna be five total, but that's the first tip. Have faith. Okay, you got this. You can do this. God got you. Period. It don't matter if nobody else got your back. It don't matter if nobody else believe in you. As long as you believe in yourself, and as long as you believe in God, everything else gonna follow. Everything else gonna fall. It's, it's gonna come to you. It's gonna come to you. He gonna start opening doors, and if the door don't open, he gonna open the window. So just, just do it. Just do, do. It. I got Nike on my shirt, but just do it on faith and stand in that in good times and hard. Okay, tip number one. I'll be back with the other folk. Bye. I don't know why I be. I'll be back. Good morning again. Um, so the other one <laughs> it's a little weird. Now mind you y'all, when you're doing YouTube videos, right? You don't know exactly how the ending product is gonna come out until it comes out. You don't know what you're gonna edit, what you're gonna take out, what you're gonna keep, what you're gonna put together. So it just is what it is. That's how it be happening. Uh, I'm not one that's going to be editing a whole bunch, taking a whole bunch of stuff out. If I said it, I said it. If I fucked up, I fucked up. Like, this is how it's going to be. Um, but anyway, so we're talking tips, uh, entrepreneur tips, or five entrepreneur tips, five tips for entrepreneur. However you want to call it, however you want to name it, however you want to slice it and dice it. And we are on our way again. To see Daddy Dave. Woo! Okay, clearly I'm sleepy as the fuck. Which brings me to my tip. I hate that fucking blinker. Um, only because I'm on video. I'm actually I'm internal. I'm not finna explain myself. I'm turning people. I hope everyone knows I'm in the turning lane because I'm turning. Um, yeah, I'll get some risk. That's the tip. That's it. That's that's the tip. <laughs> like that's the come on now, y'all go. Quit playing. That's the tip. The tip is get some rest. You have gotta put yourself on some sort of schedule. You are not a robot. Okay? You are not you are not a robot. Yes, yeah, get from behind me. Y'all up on my hands like that. You are not a robot. You cannot move like a robot. And I'm talking to myself. I don't know who else I'm talking to up in here, but I'm talking to myself. Every time I talk, I'm talking to myself. Because I tend to think that I'm a fucking robot because I do too much, way too much all the time. It's, it's, it's getting out of hand. I don't sleep. That's why I'm so sleepy right now. I literally went to sleep at like 3 o'clock last night. Because I'll wake up, I'm a night owl. I'll go to sleep at like 3 in the morning, but I'll wake up at like 10, 11 o'clock. And that's if I got to do something. If I ain't got to do nothing, I'm, I'm sleeping until about a good 2 p 2 p.m. 2 p.m.-ish. But I don't like that, though, because that throws me off. I can't work under those conditions, but it's like my body is just naturally trained that way. Come on, sir. My body is naturally trained to sleep like that, so... I'm trying to retrain it, but it's hard for me to force myself to, and I've always had insomnia, like, that's not anything new. It's hard for me to force myself to go to sleep early at like 11, and then I gotta work. Like, I, that means I would have to start work earlier, or maybe I'd have to do it on a day where I don't have to work, or do it like take some days off I ain't gotta work but then I gotta keep it going so I'm working on it I'm working on it just make a schedule um not like not making a schedule making a plan is two different things make a schedule which means like a day a everyday schedule so I don't know what you got going on. like okay I'm gonna go to bed girl who is you messaging me I'm gonna go to bed from this time to this time I'm going to eat from this time to this time. Like, this is lunch. 
this is client, 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 work, work, work. Like, literally, you have to make a schedule. My therapist told me to do that a long time ago because I was always doing so much and it was like my life was all over the place. And I feel like it was really chaotic. Where are you taking to So, I think I'm getting a, a message about, I know he, Bill Nair. He feel me, me hanging like this. Oh, he a bastard. Maybe they went to lunch. Damn, I want to know if I bring my big ass up there. I'm pretty sure they went to lunch. Okay, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back and I'm better. I had to run some errands and stuff, um, stop by the house, and then gotta go run some more errands. So, y'all get to ride with me and get advice at the same time. <laughs> Double whammy, I hate this big ass hole. Um, so, back to what I was saying, rest 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 please because i am extremely tired you have to have some type of work-life balance i don't have much of a social life um i'm an introvert anyway but i still just don't have much of a social life i don't know it's just i don't really know how to explain why i don't have a social life like well, I, I lied. I do. It's mostly is because I work too much, and then when I'm not working, I'm tired. So that's why I'm like, make a make a plan. I'm oh, sorry, make a schedule. Like, you know, take schedule some days off, schedule some vacation in there, and you want to make a schedule because you want to like have it on paper so it's easy to hold yourself accountable versus just going off the fly. Cause that's my issue now is. I'm trying to find an effective way to schedule my days and stuff. Like when it comes to, hold on, water. When it comes to my clients and stuff, that's different. Like my client calls and my business meetings and all that stuff, that's scheduled in my calendar. I promise y'all ain't drinking no liquor. Yeah, don't do, don't do y'all like me. Do not do y'all like me. Like. Please don't drive like this. When nobody coming up. Um, I'm trying to find the most effective way to make me a schedule or what my schedule would look like. Cause I can schedule like events and all that stuff I got down packed. But but as far as like scheduling my day, I hope y'all get me because it's how I gotta put this hair on. But as far as like scheduling my day and like going to sleep at this time, waking up at this time. Like, you know how when you have a job, you know you gotta go to sleep, you gotta work from eight to five or 10 to three or whatever. So you have a schedule with your job. You have to essentially do the same thing with being an entrepreneur. Like you can't, I, I'm one that I just do whatever I want and it's not gonna work, it's not gonna work like that. It's, it's not gonna be very effective like that because now I don't, I have to hold myself accountable. We, if you, have a schedule at work let's say you don't get to work on time or you don't get your work done or something happens somebody has to say something to you to hold you accountable or you get in some type of trouble versus with yourself you you let yourself slide <laughs> like it, there's nobody to hold you accountable or give you discipline or whatever if you fuck up so it's a lot of responsibility that go into that people think that's easy and it's not you have to be real disciplined and another thing is okay before i say it this is what you do not do don't do this don't do this and yes i got clothes on don't do this don't work in your bed don't stop that stop that i am still learning to not do that and i'm about to explain why this is not okay so no like, for instance, I have an office that I rent. I, mostly I rent it out now because I don't use it. Don't do not do work in your in your house if you can avoid it. Especially don't do work in your bedroom. I'm a, I have a bad habit of doing work in my bed. Don't do that. Don't do that. Your bed is for sleeping, maybe reading or laying down, 
resting because when you start to work in your bed, it's harder to sleep at night. That's scientifically proven. When you work and do stuff in your bed, it's harder to get comfortable and sleep. Because I have books and computers and everything all over my bed. And so, when it comes time to sleep, my mind still be in work mode. Here's my hand. A uh, couple hours. I bet I'm going to say. So, don't work in your bed if you can help it. If you can help not working in the house, don't work in the house either. I rent my office space if anybody want to, you know, hit me up. But I have an office that I pay rent on and I don't use it. Because it's just like, I have an office section in my house, like a little small corner with my computer and like everything. So, it's easier for me to just go there versus going across the street, even though it's literally right across the street. But when you in the comfort of your own home, you can just go two steps into the living room yeah it's kind of hard to break that habit but i really don't like working at home because i feel like home is for home work is for work it's just like when you work a regular job don't bring your work home lady 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 if you wouldn't have got on my ass like that you wouldn't have had to wait for me to turn now would you lord i am just not in today see y'all this is this is what happened when you don't rest um, but yeah, separate your workspace from your living space and your resting space. You don't want them both to be in the same area and in the same space itself. And I need y'all to hold on one second so I can make this look positive. I don't need y'all looking at my business like that. <laughs> hold on. Okay, so listen, I recorded so many clips that day from the previous one and i just i wasn't i was too tired <laughs> like i was just way too tired i couldn't that's why i tip number two get some rest period like it and i'm still tired but i'm like let me go ahead and knock this out in one sitting because if not i'm gonna get distracted it's gonna be broken up it's gonna be a lot going on so let me just go ahead and knock the rest of them out so I can get this video out. And yes, I am in my bedroom. I'm comfortable. <laughs> like, that's the thing about YouTube. Me personally, I can do it anywhere. Like, I used to have, you know, I would be sitting at my desk and doing it. But I got to the point, especially after vlogging, where it's just kind of like, mm, I'm just going to do it where I do it. And I can be comfortable. And nine times out, y'all see me driving a lot. Because that's the time where I can kind of sit still and do it. But them bumps and humps and Houston raggedy streets be, be too much sometimes. So um, we left off with making a schedule and getting some rest. Um, again, I'm still working on that. Like I told myself tonight, let's see this one, it's 9.13. I told myself tonight, um, I'm not doing a 3 o'clock in the morning thing. It's not happening. It can wait till tomorrow. Like, for the past two or three days, I've been going to sleep at three in the morning. And I'm trying to can, and I just can't. Most of it has been TTM stuff. Um, I just, I be up. Because in the daytime, I'm running around. So at nighttime, when I get home and I get settled, I take a little break. And then now is the time I will start working. But because I do, I do so much work at the computer, I'll literally be sitting there for hours and not even realize how long time it is. So, yeah, we're not doing it tonight. I hope. No, we're not. I'm going to go ahead and say it. We're not doing it tonight. This is what. Um, so, hold on, y'all. Let me make sure my phone was not disturbed. Okay, I'm back. I had to make sure my phone was on do not disturb because I didn't want it to cut my video off. Um, so, we did uh, have faith. We did have a schedule and get some rest. Next, you want to have a plan. Now, I recorded a video on having a plan, but at the time, I was driving, and I got distracted, and, yeah, didn't really get, it wasn't effective, because <laughs> I get distracted really easily, like, my attention span, I'll, I'll be doing too many things at one time, so, it was make a plan, tip number three, and I really hope y'all can hear me with these headphones on, like, I'm nervous, because I feel like my, my video ain't gonna work. We're going to just have to find out the hard way because I'm not going to stop this video and start another one because editing, yeah, too much, too many clips. But make a plan. 
like whether it's like with me, I'm very impulsive. I'm an impulsive person. I'm an impulsive shopper. I can sometimes be an impulsive decision maker. I'm a very emotional decision maker. Like I literally started TTM like a few months after my grandmother died. And it was already kind of in the works, but I kind of just decided it was going to be a nonprofit right after my grandma died. And later on, I realized that after talking to my therapist, I was postponing my grief. So I was so busy trying to create this nonprofit that I wasn't, I didn't take time to grieve. And I had to deal with that later on. So make sure you make a plan. Don't do things impulsively. Now, I don't make big decisions and I don't do that impulsively. Like, I, I no, 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 no. I got to talk to God first. <laughs> like, I need to know this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And, like, even with my job, even becoming a full-time entrepreneur, I knew that it was going to happen one day. Like, I knew years ago it was going to happen. When I switched to, from full-time to part-time, it was working part-time, I knew I wasn't going to go back full-time. No matter how many times I tried, it just, it, it never worked. And it's because I do too much. Like, it's it's not, I would literally kill myself. Like, I, it's way too much. Like, something would have to go. So, I knew that the day was going to come. I just didn't know when. So, I was planning mentally and, you know, on paper for that time to come. I just never knew how it was going to happen. I never knew when it was going to happen. And I literally, like, at the school, I was going to become full-time because I needed more money to pay off my debt. And then when the time came, TTM skyrocketed. Like when I tell y'all overnight, TTM just grew and it, it became so much work between that and the school and my clients that it was like, okay, no, I can't go full time. Like I had a test run where I worked like 30, 40 hours a week. Couldn't do it. I was bringing work home. It was, it was way too much on me. I literally had to step back from TTM like, uh, I need a minute. I can't. I'm trying to can and I can't. <laughs> and it's like with my clients, I have to do that work because that's money that I'm making. Like I need that money. So my clients, I, I got to put them in priority. Like it, I'm sorry. I ha I love TTM. Y'all know that's my baby. Like TTM is my everything. But at the same time, TTM uses money and I give it. So <laughs> I had to put my client, my paying clients ahead of time. I mean, ahead of everything else other than my job. So I was like, no, I'm not going to be able to do this, especially for the amount of money y'all trying to give me. It's a no for me. It's a no for me. So I was like, you know what? And it was kind of like an either full time or nothing. So I just took the nothing. I was like, I'm just going to I'm just going to be a full time entrepreneur because I could have got another part time job. But it's like you keep getting these part time jobs and it's you not staying long or you get overwhelmed. You get too busy because my business and TCM are steady growing by the day. So it only made sense for me to do it. Now, in the event that I have to get a part-time job, of course I am. Like, I've already, again, make a plan. I've already planned for that. And if y'all hear my ghetto neighbors in the background, I'm sorry, my window is right by the sidewalk. But I had to plan for that as well because there may be financial hardships or a time might come where I need to get a part-time job. But because of my experience and my education and my credentials, then I know it won't be hard for me to get a job if I if I needed to do it. So I have made plans for that just in case it does happen. I'm lucky that I am with somebody who also works and who also helps with household things or things that I need, whether it's bills, whether it's food, whether it's cl uh, clothes, whether it's something with TTM need. I'm blessed to have that. I'm blessed to have people in my life and in my circle that are supportive if I need something, I can call them. I'm blessed to have Dave, especially because every time I know I need something and I try to go to him last minute, like if it's no other option, then I have him. Excuse me. I shouldn't have did this in my room. See, why he got to do it like this? And he watched my YouTube channel. Then, I'm going to get you. <laughs> I'm gonna get you for that. <laughs> I'm gonna get you. Um, you like to see me. <laughs> like, really? And I don't even know how bad y'all gonna hear it until I go to play this back. But, so if, I'm gonna try to talk a little bit louder. Again, make a plan. Like, don't just do things impulsively. Don't just go out and say, oh, I'm gonna be a full time entrepreneur. It, 
Hold on, y'all. Damn, I hate living in the hood. <clears throat> okay, I'm back. Due to the get on this of my neighbors, <laughs> I had to I had to move to my office area. They probably gonna be in the hallway. I hate living on the end because my room is right by the entryway and I can hear everything. The door opening in it, it's just too much. Again, make a plan, because my plan is to get out of this apartment and move somewhere where, like, literally, I can have a whole room dedicated to office, YouTube, everything. So, again, making a plan is important. Like, that's a part of my plan. So, hopefully, y'all don't hear nothing in the background. If y'all do, sorry, can't do anything about it. Um, but, back to what I was saying, you want to be careful not to make decisions like just on the fly you want to make sure that you talk to god before you make any decisions um because that may not be the plan he has for you and i don't mean to be mean when i normally say this but for one everybody not built to be an entrepreneur it, it's, it's just not your calling and everybody not made to be in certain fields like i may see somebody that i don't feel like their credentials or what they do kind of fits what they're doing. And I'm not in that person's life, so I can't tell them what to do. But it's like, say for instance, and this is no shade. I'm literally just coming up with a hypothetical. Say for instance, you come out with a book, right? Or multiple books over a course of years, like I did. But your books are not a certain caliber. But you decide to have a class or public become a publisher or do certain things to help others and you still haven't gotten there yet like for me I feel like I was at that time and it's crazy because my editor told me back when my first book came out she was like you, you you're bigger than this like you're going to be bigger than this you're not going to stay an author forever like you're going to grow and when she said it I was like what nah like I'm just going to write a couple books and you know, I'm just going to stay an author. And that's not what God had for me. Like, it wasn't, it started off with just editing little small things and then it grew into a publishing company that was, you know, inspired by my grandmother. And again, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> like, I didn't see that coming. But when I started to see it kind of grow and manifest itself and I did editing for so long, I planned to then become a publisher and then to build a publishing company because I do a lot of different things, but I make sure that the things I do are within my caliber and my expertise. Like say for instance, marketing, I suck at marketing. Like even in college, I failed marketing so many times. I'm not good at marketing. I don't have a patience. I don't have the level of creativity, I, the graphics and I don't like social media. Like that's not my, that's not my ministry. So I know that. And I'm not going to become a marketing person. Like I have, I have shared in for that. I have untamed marketing for that. And that's going to, it's going to make it, I'm going to um, dive more into that. So I, I just stay in my lane and do what I can do. Like with accounting, I have all of my background in accounting as far as jobs, as far as education, shout out to them, them two degrees that was expensive that's behind me. Um, that's, what I and it, when I was in high school, I literally thought that I was gonna grow up, be a CPA, and work at a CPA firm. I I didn't think entrepreneurship at all. I was on the accounting team in high school. I won district champion. Like accounting was always my passion. So I thought that's what my purpose was. I thought that's what I was gonna be. Like you know, when you grow up, you're like, oh, I want to be this, oh, I want to be that. But God had other plans for me, and I learned that. Now I learned it a little late. I was already in grad school when I realized, hey, this not really the route that you're supposed to be taking. Like, you're not supposed to just be become a CPA and then work at somebody's firm. So I said, you know what? No. And that was in shout out to Sharice for also helping me notice that. And I didn't see it in myself. So, again, you can make a plan. But at the end of the day, ultimately, it's God's plan. Like, it's what he wants for your life. And he's already planned it out before you were created in the womb. Like, he's already laid out, you know, I know the plans that I have for you. Like, I know, before you even were, before you was even born, he was like, okay, you're going to do this, 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 this. Like, you think you're going to do this, but what you really going to do is this. Like, 
Natalie said, you know, you want to make God laugh, tell him what you're going to do. Because you can have a plan and God be like, nah, nah, that ain't it. Mm -mm. This is what you're going to do. And are you going to listen? <laughs> like, I need you to, I need you to listen. I need to be clear. This is what you're going to do. So he'll, you know, have a different plan for your life and you have to follow that path. Like you have to listen to him. You have to talk to him. And when you understand your purpose, you plan from there. You create your plan from that. And when you create your plan, you know, that's why they have the five-year plans, 10-year plans. Don't be upset if your plan doesn't go the way you want it to go. Like, your plan may be off track. You can plan, and it may not be exactly how you want it done. It may not be exactly how you plan for it. And that's okay. Like, I've had a lot of plans that I've wanted to do, and it's like, no, that's not what I'm supposed to be doing. Or I should be doing this instead of this. Or I have to change, like something in my plan don't be upset because it's like no i want to control this that's not what i planned it's supposed to be this this is this, this so when something go wrong hold on y'all i'm back pardon the interruptions it's it'd be a lot going on over here um and i'm just gonna leave that on it but and then y'all know i lose the train of thoughts so off the I just want to finish this video because <laughs> I already got the topic for my next one. And me and Ronnie did one called 18 Questions that I can't wait to post. I'm Y'all got to wait on that one. Y'all got to see me first. And shout out to everybody who watched Christian's birthday vlog. We had too much fun with that one. But anyway, I was telling y'all about making a plan. So, I mean, I think for the most part, I, I made that part clear. You know, so, so far we have have faith. Then we have schedule and rest like make a schedule and rest and making a schedule is different from making a plan when you make a plan you're planning for the future you're planning for what what you're going to do you know what steps you're going to take versus with a schedule you're kind of planning like on a weekly or daily basis like i'm going to do this at this time i'm going to do this i'm going to do this i'm going to do this and you have to rest like you, I have that really bad. Like you have got to rest or you will experience burnout. I have experienced burnout on multiple occasions. I've experienced a, a mental breakdown where I had to kind of step back from everything. I've experienced that. And you will get burnout if you don't rest and if you don't take care of yourself. So make sure you do that. Those are the three tips so far. Number four. This is important. And shameless plug. Please outsource the things that you do not know how to do. Mainly the top two, accounting and marketing. Those are the main two things that make a business or entrepreneur or a brand thrive. In everything, you got to make sure that your legal stuff is on point. In everything, you got to make sure that your financials are on point. There's so many things a lot of people don't know and they will lose their business. Like for instance, Franchise taxes, state taxes, like you have to pay those either every month or every quarter, depending on how big your business is. Like it's, and if you don't, you will lose your LLC or you will lose your business if you don't pay that. And a lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't know you got to file sales taxes every, every quarter. Even if you don't, if you just filing, like you, you didn't make any money, then you still have to file. You still have to file that return. Um, <clears throat> That's franchises every year, sales taxes every quarter or every month, depending on how big your business is. Like for the restaurant that I do accounting for, they file every month because they're making like a hundred and some thousand dollars every month versus my business, for example, I file every quarter. So a lot of people don't know that. And you would know that if you were outsourcing your financials and your accounting and your legal stuff, like outsource, find somebody like... And plus, if you don't know how to do it, even if you know how to do it, you got to think you're too busy being a CEO. You're too busy actually running the business to try to do everything. I tried to do that. Like even with marketing, I tried to do my own marketing. Fail. Ultimate fail. <laughs> like I gave up. I was, it's too much. And I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do it right. So I was like, you know what? I'm sharing and I need you. <laughs> you so i found somebody who was dope at it and that's that's what they do and i, I let them do it because it's just not that ain't my ministry i know i'm a numbers person so outsource your marketing and your accounting 
or even you know get you a lawyer to handle your legal stuff outsource focus on building your brand and building your business and being the actual ceo and for other things outsource that i promise you you know a lot of people like oh it's expensive it's not in my budget I do budgets too. Like you have to make that investment and bite the bullet and pay somebody to do it versus burning yourself out trying to do it yourself. Even if you're a small business, even if you just started, plant mark first of all, marketing is everything. Like marketing is everything. If you don't market your business, it ain't gonna work. I learned it the hard way. If you don't do your marketing and do it correctly, mm-mm. Because people got to know about your business. People got to know about your brand. People got to know, like, people have, you, you got to have your graphics right. You got to have your page got to look a certain way. You got analytics. Like, if you don't market your brand, it's, it's not going to work. And you can market it yourself. Of course, you're supposed to market it yourself. Go do networking events. Go talk to people. Tell people about yourself. Like, However you choose to do that, make a video, make a post. Like, you can do stuff like that and you can market yourself, but you still need it done professionally. Like, you still, it, you need to grow. You have to grow your business and grow your brand. And that's how you get it out there is with somebody who specializes in that. Again, I learned it the hard way. My business got bigger by marketing the correct way and using somebody who knew how to do that. With accounting, take for instance TTM or even with my own accounting. I ain't gonna lie, I outsource that too. <laughs> like I, I'm so focused on everybody else that I have to outsource that because I would much rather focus on everybody else stuff. And this is something that I literally know how to do. Like I literally have a business for it, but I need help sometimes. So I outsource it. Like I let somebody else do it. If if need be, especially with TTM. Like if TTM is a it's a lot to do accounting for a nonprofit. So outsource. Like, just go ahead and make that investment and pay somebody to do something versus trying to research it, trying to do it yourself. Like, even with grant writing, like, I tried to figure out how to do grant writing by myself. No, that ain't my ministry. Outsource it. Find somebody else to do it. So you have to outsource. And accounting and marketing are of the most important things you have to have for your business. Like, them financials got to be right. Them taxes got to be right. You could lose your business. You can get in trouble. It's so many things that can happen. I'm not going to even get started with these loans. I, I ain't going to go there with them SBA loans and them PPP loans. I did a video on that where I was trying to start to give y'all tips, and I literally just went on a whole rant. Like, I don't know if I want to post it yet. I'm still deciding. Like, y'all tell me if y'all want to post it because I was really going off. But what I was saying made sense. So I'm not going to even touch on that. But make sure your stuff is in order. And, like, say, for instance, you come to me and you, I do your accounting. You literally don't, and you can ask any of my clients, you literally don't have to do anything. Like, I send financial statements every month. I pull transactions, I classify them, and I send financial statements every month. I pay taxes, like I pay your taxes for you. You literally don't have to worry about anything except looking at your profit for the month or your profit for the year, at the end of the year, for the quarter, or whatever. Like, I also do federal tax returns. So it takes so much off of you when you can just look at it. Like, if I ask you, how much did you make last month? Like, to the T, to where you can, it's, it's accurate. Like, you spent this on meals, you spent this on auto, you spent, like, where it's accurate financials. Like, where literally it looks like a financial statement or a profit and loss statement. If I ask you how much money did you make last month in profit, do you know the answer to that question? So go ahead, Evans Financial Solution. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead and, and come on over here. Join, <laughs> go and join the team. Um, go ahead and hit up Untamed Marketing so they can get you right. And we got a special going on right now for August. For July, well, we had it for July and August. So go on our Instagrams, which I put across the screen, and literally like get your stuff done right. It's okay to outsource. You cannot do everything yourself. You're too busy running the business. So when you got to run the business, you got to market the business, you have to do accounting, when you have to do all these things, it becomes overwhelming. And it, again, you experience burnout. Get somebody else to do all that. Take some of the stuff off your plate and focus on, you know, let's say, for instance, you have a bar, right? Focus on the customer service side of it and making sure your employees or your bartenders or your waitresses are okay, like, 
focus on that part of it, like the actual customer service. Go out and greet the, the customers and stuff like that and the fun part of it. And have somebody else do the legwork. Have somebody else do your accounting and marketing so you don't have to worry about that. You're just the face. Like, you're just, you, you, you're the face of your own brand and everybody else is taking care of your other stuff. And that's something you don't have to worry about. That's less stuff that you have on your plate. Did my headphones just go off? Okay. I'm going to keep them in anyway, but I think my headphones just went out. Either way, y'all going to be able to hear me. Y'all better be able to hear me because let me tell you, I'm not recording this again. Um, And that's tip number four. So we have have faith, make a schedule and rest, make a plan, and outsource, especially your marketing and accounting. Number five. It's okay to fail. It is okay to fail. And I wanted to start with have faith and end on this note, on this encouraging note. It's okay to fail. If you fail, then first of all, I'm going to be honest with you and I'm not being pessimistic. You're going to fail. It's, it's a part of the process. Like Because in order to know what you need to do right and in order to grow, you have to fail at something. Because it's like, okay, I failed at this. That wasn't that wasn't working for me. Let me try to do this. Especially if you try to create your own plan and God doesn't have that plan for you, then you will fail until you realize, okay, this isn't the right plan for me. This isn't the path I'm supposed to be on. So it's okay to fail. It's just a matter of are you going to stay down there? Are you going to accept your failure and not do anything else? No, you're going to get back up. You're going to try again. Whether you try a different method, the same method, it's not a matter of failure. Everybody's going to fail at something. Like, you are going to fail, even if it's small, even if it's big. I failed so many times, especially with that first book, Ultimate Fail. I failed so many times throughout five, six years. I made bad decisions. I've done, and when I say bad decisions, I mean like the wrong decisions. Like, oh, I shouldn't have done it this way. I should have did it this way. I don't want y'all to think I'm out here being illegal. <laughs> but I've made decisions that didn't work. I made plans that didn't work. I made plans and execute them and they failed. Like you're going to fail. It's a part of being an entrepreneur. It's just a matter of, are you going to stay down? Are you going to remain in that state? Or are you going to get back up and try again? I really want to start singing the lead right now. I'm singing it in my head. I'm not going to sing it out loud. But are you going to get up? Get up. Get up. Get up. <laughs> like I'm I'm y'all know I don't I didn't come to play. Get up. Do not stay down there. Take a minute. Focus on yourself. Redirect your energy. And then sit and make a plan and talk to God on okay, this didn't work. What else can I do? Don't stay there. Don't literally like I failed. I'm nothing. I suck. I can't do this. Like, it's, it's not for me. I don't want to do this no more. No, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. <laughs> we're not doing that. We're not doing that. I'm talking to you. Get up. Try again. If you fail again, get up. Try again. Find a different solution. Try again and again and again. If it's your purpose and it's truly in your heart, first of all, you're not going to be able to give up. You might give up temporarily, but you're not going to stay there because it's going to keep bugging you and God going to keep, hey, hey, what you, what you doing? We, <laughs> like, we got moves to make. What are you doing? Hey, get up, get up. What are you doing? And then you have people like me or motivational speakers or whatever that are going to motivate you to give up. I mean, sorry, motivate you to get up. I don't play that. I don't play that, especially with my with my authors and my writing clients. Because you, you put that book on the back burner and it's something that God is really calling you to do. Look what you're doing. Are you writing? When it when is your book gonna come out? Where are we? I'll give you a little break, but then I'm I'm on your ass. Like what <laughs> like what are we doing? Like, no, get up. Start writing again. Like, I'm going to help you try to find that fire that's now missing. And if you fail, we're going to get back up. And if we got to do it together, we're going to do it together. Like, it's, it's, it's going to happen. Don't stay there.
it's okay to fail. Don't think that it's not okay because it's going to happen. But you just have to get back up again. And you have to start over or you have to find a different way to do it. Whether it's a nonprofit, a for profit, or whatever it is that you're doing, even if you have a YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is it ain't big yet. But y'all don't see me like, oh man, I ain't got that many views. I I need some more subscribers. I ain't got that many subscribers. Like these videos ain't going nowhere. Let me just quit. Let me just end the YouTube channel. It's just not for me. Like I nope. It, it's gonna grow. It's gonna take time. And I don't look at the numbers. Like, do I, I? I'm working towards monetization, but it's not like I wake up tomorrow and I'm not there. So it's like I, I quit. Or I wake up three months from now and it's not there, and it's like I, I quit. Mm -mm. I'm gonna keep posting. I'm gonna keep posting. I'm gonna keep posting. I'm gonna keep posting. <laughs> like until I get to where I want to get to, and that's what you have to do. Like that's what you have to do. Even if my my business slowed down because of COVID, so. That I didn't say, you know what, forget it. I'm not going to do this publishing company no more. I ain't got no clients. I'm not going to do this bookkeeping business no more. I I give up. I'm not going to do TTM no more. Like, whatever. It's just not like we ain't got no money when I get no grants. So it's it's pointless. Like, I can't. I can't afford this. I can't do this. I'm tired. Like, everything not going to go the way you want it to go. Like, even in life. Not even just as an entrepreneur, even in life. Everything's not going to go the way you want it to go. It's not perfect. It don't work like that. Like trial and error. You have to try something. If it don't work, try something else. And that goes along again with have faith. Like if you have faith, then you know, okay, this didn't work. Let me try something else. Like I have faith. I'm not going to give up because I know this is going to happen because God told me it's going to happen. Again, that's why it's important to talk to him and hear him clearly. Don't hear, you don't hear what you want to hear. Hear him clearly. Have that relationship with him. Pray about it fast. Read your word. Hear him clearly. Pay attention to the signs. What is he telling you to do? And I can feel it. Like, literally, when God is calling me to do something, I can feel it. If I am, I have a struggle of something, I have a problem, I'm like, you know what? I ain't going to even sweat it. I ain't going to sweat it. Because God said, look, in this world, you will have tribulation, but be a good cheer for I have overcome the world. That's why John 16, 33 is one of my favorite scriptures. Because he said that. Life ain't made to be easy. It's made to be hard. But are you going to let that difficulty and that failure defeat you? No. No. Period. It's not happening. And I said what I said. I said, you, it's not happening. <laughs> like, it, it's not. Hold yourself accountable. Get back up. Try again. You got this. Like, you literally have this. I promise you, you got it. You might not think you do, but I promise you, you got it. I don't even know you personally, but I know you got it. So, those are my five tips. Have faith. Make a schedule and rest. Uh, make a plan. Have a plan. And outsource. It's okay to outsource accounting and marketing or whatever it is that you don't know how to do or that you don't have time to do. Outsource. Make that investment into your business and into yourself. It, it's going to cost. But I promise it's going to benefit you. Like, I promise the benefit is greater than the cost. And it's okay to fail. It's okay to fail. It's not okay to stay there. You hold on to those tips, and there's more, but you hold on to those five main tips, you will be okay. You will be a successful entrepreneur. I promise you. I know this because I've done it. And I'm still working on it. There's some things that I'm not perfect at, that I'm not, I'm still working on the schedule. I'm still working on the rest. I'm still working on stuff. You know, that's, I'm still there. I'm, I'm right there with you. But I'm telling you this one, because I know, and two, that's, I'm a motivator for a reason. Again, it's what God called me to do, my purpose, ultimately. At the end of the day, that's what my purpose is. So those are my five tips, my advice to you. I wish you all of success, all of the love, all of the peace and prosperity and the blessings I send you away. And you got this, like, period, period. That's all you need to know is you got this. I love y'all. I want y'all to prosper. Shout out to my black-owned businesses, my small businesses. 
y'all ain't gonna be small failing. You're gonna grow. I can feel the growth. I can, I can feel the growth. <laughs> I can, I, y'all think I'm bullshit. I can feel the growth. It's gonna happen. Like, it's gonna happen. Have faith and believe. So, love y'all, and I'll see y'all on the next video. Bye.